All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for being with us this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning, Easter Sunday 2020. Thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to come and join with us. Uh, again, my name is Don Heider, Assistant Pastor at the Adrian First Free Will Baptist Church, and it is a wonderful day, not just because it's sunny out and it's nice weather outside, but because today we celebrate a risen Savior, and so we are so thankful for the eternal hope and the love that was shown to each and every one of us that are bought by the blood of Jesus, because without Jesus Christ and a cross at Calvary and the resurrection, we'd have no hope this morning. So we are so thankful for all that Jesus Christ has done. And we are thankful to have each and every one of you with us this morning as well. Hopefully all of you are safe and healthy and that your families are doing wonderful as well. Uh, this morning it may be a little different than what we've ever done on an Easter Sunday. We're not gathered together in person, but thank God we're gathered together. And no matter where we are, as I said last night, we are the church. So this morning uh, we're going to have a few songs that I'm going to play for you. That'll give time for other people to be able to uh, log on. Uh, also, uh, before we go any further, I just want to welcome uh, Sister Rachel. Good to see you this morning. Uh, Sean Joseph McDowell, uh, so thankful to have uh, Sean and Karen Jones uh, with us this morning. Uh, Sister Teresa and Brother Bob, uh, Sister Jane and Brother Gary, and Aunt Joy, good to see you. And I know Uncle Jim is there as well. We love you guys and thank you for being with us this morning. I pray that uh, everything is wonderful with each and every one of you. And again, thank you for joining us this morning. First song we're going to play is, uh, all of you have probably heard this before, but it's Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. So uh, as we listen to this, I want you to praise and worship God as he leads you to do so wherever you are, because today is a wonderful day as we celebrate, as I said before, a risen Savior and the hope and the love that Jesus Christ has shown. Thank you so much for being here this morning, and I pray that this service touches your life. Give this song a moment to load. But the song will be Because He Lives...
Amen. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Uh, I am so thankful this morning for the love of Jesus Christ and everything that he has done for me and my family. And I know that if you look back over your life and all that Jesus Christ has done for you, I know that today and every day, not just today, that we could, we could say out loud, Lord, you've been too good to me. I know in all the things that God's done for me, they're things I didn't deserve. But in his love and in his mercy, he gave them to me anyway. And I'm thankful for all that he has done for me. And, and as I said last night, through the good times and the bad, I'm thankful for a Savior that loved me more than I love myself. And so this morning, uh, continue to comment. Comment your prayer requests, your testimonies, your praise reports. Let me tell you something. Today, if we can't praise God today in observance to celebrate what he's done for us, then there's something wrong. Because today in, in a Christian's life should be the greatest day that we've ever had is knowing that a Savior loved us enough to take our cross to a place called Calvary to die and to be buried. But praise God, today he rose in victory over death, hell, and the grave and gave us hope of eternal life. And I'm so thankful for that. And I know each and every one of you watching this morning are thankful too. As I said, we're going to have about two or three more songs. So let's continue to praise the Lord. And let's continue to tell the Lord how much we love him and how much we care for him. And this one is called The Old Rugged Cross. I know that you know this song.
Amen. That's the old rugged cross. Continue to bring in your, to comment, your prayer requests, your praise reports, your testimonies. And uh, this, sec- this next song, I know that everyone knows this song. And I tell you what, it speaks for itself. And so I'm not even going to introduce it because you're going to know what it is the moment that it plays. But please listen to the words of this song more than ever. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. So thankful this morning for all that God has done in my life, in my family's life. And I know that you could speak for the same. Let me go over some of the comments we have here. We have many. So I don't want to... uh, uh, miss anyone um, that has left a prayer request. <coughs> Excuse me. A prayer for my family and for my relationship. Love you all. That's from uh, Sean and Karen. Uh, S- Sister Rachel commented my mom's favorite song. Uh, Sister Mary prayers for her family. Uh, Sister Kathy. Hey, good morning, Sister Kathy. You and Brother Glenn, good morning to you. Says, pray for Danny. That's their daughter. She's been sick for over a week, and I have an unspoken. Please pray for my family. Absolutely. We are going to continue to do so, and I know that in the name of Jesus Christ, she's going to be okay. 
Uh, Sister Rachel says, prayers for my family and friends and all children. Absolutely. Amen. Hey, Aunt Joy. Um, see, Sister Lorraine. Hey, good morning. You love that song, Pray for My Family. Absolutely. Uh, Aunt Joy, pray for my family and me. Uh, again, uh, my mom and I's favorite song, Love You, Rachel Jones. Uh, Sister Tricia says, pray for my family, please. Absolutely. We are going to do that. Uh, Kathy Bow, good morning again. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. I just wanted to read over some of those before we continue uh, going on. I didn't want to miss anyone. Um, so thank, so thankful for each and every one of you joining us this morning. I'm trying to do multiple things at a time, so I do apologize. Uh, but so thankful for all the comments. So thankful for all the positive words. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's all about Jesus Christ. So let's lift up the name of the Lord. Let's get excited this morning, wherever you're at. You have no excuse. You don't have to worry about the person sitting next to you because you're in your own home. And so you can get just as excited as you want to get. And you don't have to worry about, well, you know, somebody might see me get excited. But you know what? We shouldn't care who's watching. We should get excited in the Lord and thank him for all that he's done for us. We have plenty enough to praise God for. And I'll tell you right now, above all else, we should be praising God because he loved us enough to die for us and to raise again and give us that eternal hope of salvation and eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so we should be excited, excited, excited this morning. I'll tell you what, we're going to go, and the scripture reference we're going to be in this morning, if you have your Bibles, hopefully you do. Uh, if not, there's so many verses, I'm not going to be able to show them to you on the screen. Uh, but I am going to show you the scripture reference. We're going to be in Luke uh, chapter 24. We're not going to read all 53 verses, but... Uh, I want you in your free time to read this entire chapter because it's going to give you the account um, of the events in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we're going to be in Luke chapter 24 this morning. And again, I'm thankful for what today represents and what for today means. And so we're going to read a f uh, quite a few verses, but uh, we're not going to read all 53 of them. But uh, like I said, please take the time today to read over this chapter and really let Jesus speak to your life and let his Holy Spirit speak to you in your heart. If you're there, Luke chapter 24, verse 1 says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, then they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, the, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and, rain, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast, thou, hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, 
and how the chief priests and their rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been that been it he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. When they found not his body, they came saying that he had also seen a vision of angels. They had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher, and found it even as the women had said. But him they saw not. Guys, I want you to understand something. This morning we celebrate a risen Savior, but as we read through God's word this morning, even his own disciples, when they seen with their eyes, didn't believe what they seen. The Bible says, blessed are they that have not seen and still believe. See, when they had walked with Jesus and all the things that Jesus had said to them and had promised to them that he would rise again. The third day came and he rose again and they didn't believe what had happened. And as the Bible says, as they were walking along this road and they were talking amongst themselves, I want you to think about this in today's terms. They had, let's say that we walked with Jesus in human form. And he promised to us that he was going to die on a cross at Calvary and the third day he was going to rise again. And that third day came and we ran to the sepulcher and we found him not there. And we began to walk back to our homes or where we had come from. We were talking amongst ourselves. I wonder what happened to him. Yeah, he promised he'd rise again, but do you really believe that? Now, I understand they were human. And believe me, guys, no one's ever seen someone raised from the dead. Jesus was the only one that prophesied he'd rise again. He guaranteed it. But humanly, they doubted it. And most likely, we would too, if we were in their position. But the Bible says as they talked together, Jesus joined them in their walk. But they didn't know who he was. And he asked them, what are you guys talking about? And why are you so sad? And one of them said, most likely what we all would have. And I'm just going to paraphrase. Are you new? Have you not been here? You not know of what's already happened. Jesus said, what has happened? They said, well, Jesus has been crucified. And they buried him in a tomb. And the third day, he said he'd rise again. Well, today's the third day. And we didn't find him in his tomb. And as you read along in this chapter, you're going to see where Jesus had shown himself and made it known who he was, and even then they still didn't believe. But as he appeared to them in the upper room and told them to come and feel his nail-scarred hands and to see for themselves, because the Bible says Jesus said a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone, so come, feel, and touch see for yourself the reason I want you to focus on this this morning is because it should not take the Lord having the sky fall on us or having us to have to physically touch him in order for us to believe that what he says is truth last night during our prayer service I said that we need to trust God in all things and guys, I want you to understand something this morning. We are here celebrating the risen Savior, but church, we need to be alive in Jesus Christ. We serve a Savior that's alive and well and at the right hand of the Father in heaven, waiting to come back for his church one day. We serve a risen Savior, and we as the church of Jesus Christ need to be alive as well. We need to be alive in the spirit of Almighty God. We need to be thankful this morning where we are right now that we have that hope of eternal life and we need to be praising God. We need to be getting excited. We need to be showing the world what it means to truly be a Christian. 
And we don't need to sit around like we're just beat down and we're defeated. I know life is hard. But don't allow the devil to get you into a point in your life to where you can't even praise God for all that he's done for you. Now you be careful, I might get excited. <laughs> Those of you who know me and know my dad, we preach the word of God with fire and conviction because we believe what we preach. Because it's truth. Jesus Christ is alive and it's time that the church is alive too. No matter where you are, I said this last night, church isn't a building. Church is you and I bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to be excited. We need to be thankful. We need to be just so overwhelmed with the joy in our heart and the happiness in our heart because of what Jesus Christ has done. So wherever you are, I want you to look at the person next to you and say, praise God, we serve a risen Savior. Because it's good. As, as, as David said, it's good to go to the house of the Lord. Well, guess what? We've come to the house of the Lord. You know, I was watching something last night that somebody had asked uh, this, this pastor if God had brought this coronavirus in order to get our attention. And his answer was, I don't know what God is doing. He said, and I'm not going to speculate what God is doing. But he said, it's definitely gotten our attention. And it has. We no longer can sit in a church. Now, think about this for a minute. And this is what he said uh, in that. And I wanted to share that with you this morning is that. Um, uh, hold on one second. Joy said there's no sound, but everybody else seems to be uh, picking up. Um, if that changes, let me know. If, if, if you're getting sound before we go any further, uh, leave me a comment that you're getting sound. Because my Aunt Joy said that she has no sound. Um. And so before we go any further, I want to make sure that we have sound. If you are hearing this, go ahead and leave me a comment. Oh, okay. She said it's back. All right. We're good to go. <laughs> we'll continue on. It must have been a glitch over there. But uh, uh, anyway, he was saying that, uh, and think about this this morning, is people will complain now that they're not able to go to church, but did they go to church before this happened? See, you don't realize the blessings that you and I have until they're taken away. See, when we had the option to be able to gather together in the house of the Lord, did we take advantage of that option? Or did we take time to sleep in and, and as Brother Mike that goes to our church would say, uh, played Holy Roller and rolled back over and went to sleep? You know, I've said it before, you don't realize what you have until it's gone. You don't realize the blessings that you have until they're gone. You don't realize all the things that God's done for you until he takes them away. <clears throat> Church, we need not have the Lord have to take things away from us in order for us to realize how much we need him. We need to know and we need to realize all that God does for us on a daily basis and be thankful from the bottom of our, of our heart for what God has done. Now, I'm going to agree with this pastor and say, I don't know what God's doing. But I trust him because he knows. And I do know that through this coronavirus, it has opened the eyes of every person on earth to the fact that they're not in control. But I'm thankful that I serve a Savior this morning that has always been in control. I'm thankful that no matter what happens in my life, that I serve a Savior that has it under control. That's going to guide me. That's going to direct me in the way that I should go. You know, a while back we had a scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. I thank God for the promises that he's given me. I thank God today, not just for a risen Savior but for a Savior that one day is coming back for those that are bought by the blood of Jesus. And praise God, I'm one of those. And I'm looking forward to when Jesus comes back for me and comes back for his church. That's going to be a wonderful day. But I'll tell you what, guys, we have a job to do. We have responsibilities right now to the blood of Jesus. We get excited and we're thankful for a risen Savior, but we have responsibilities 
to Jesus Christ. We have responsibilities to share the word of God with those desperately in need. And I'll tell you right now, there's a world desperately in need of Jesus Christ. It may be your neighbors across the street. You know, the executive order today, and I'm going to speak about this, that you weren't able to gather at church. And if you did, you were going to get arrested. That's sad. Because they're going to use a virus in order, and I know it's bad. And I know it is, but they're going to use this in order to keep people from gathering together. That's fine, because you don't have to gather together in a church to praise God. We are the church. But let me tell you something. They cannot dictate our relationship with God. And you may disagree with me on this, but the government never will dictate our relationship to God. We need to be able to, in our hearts, say, God, I'll serve you if I've got to do it in the basement of my house I'm going to serve you and I'm going to get excited and I'm not going to let anybody deter me from doing that. The apostles had to hide from the Jews in order to serve God because of the threats and everything else that they would have received if caught doing it. But praise God, they kept doing it. When they uh, met together in the upper room and, and just as Jesus had told them to do, they, for them to be in, endowed from up on high, before they went out on their ministry, they gathered in the upper room, and I'm sure they were afraid. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know if they were going to get caught, but they did it anyway because they trusted Jesus. And church, we need to trust God in absolutely everything. Now pray for our world leaders. Pray for those that are in authority over us here on earth. But let me tell you something. All things, we need to trust God in everything. Because like I said last night, he's never let us down, and he never will. But those this morning that in God's word had went to the tomb on the third day to prepare the body. Now I want you to think about that. In the very first part of that chapter, it says they went with spices to prepare the body. See, if they believed that Jesus was going to raise from the dead, they wouldn't have brought spices to prepare a body. They doubted. Why? Because they'd never seen anyone raised from the dead. They had walked with Jesus. They had seen the miracles of Jesus. They had heard the words of Jesus. And yet they doubted. Let me ask you a question this morning. I know everyone at this time right now has questions and fears in their life. Are you trusting God? Or are you doubting him? That's the message that I want you to hear this morning. Are we trusting God or are we doubting him? It's a very simple question. That each of us have to look deep in our own heart and say, God, have I trusted you like I should? Or have I doubted you more than I've trusted? This morning there are questions even that I have that I don't have an answer to right now. I don't know when this coronavirus will end. I don't know when we'll be able to go back to a normal life, if that's going to be possible, or how long that will take. I don't know how many more right here in Linaway County are going to be infected or already are. I don't know what God's plan is or what God's direction is, but I'm simply going to trust him. I'm simply going to take him by the hand and say, God, I know that you know so I'm going to trust you. It's okay, church, to say, I don't know. It's okay to not have all the answers. But trust the one who does. That's the best advice that I can give anyone, is trust God. Because if we put all of our trust in God, we don't have anything to worry about. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to question day-to-day -day activity because we'll trust the one who has it all figured out, who has it all under control. So this morning, are you trusting God or are you doubting him? I know that God has made you promises in your life. And I know some of you are still holding to those promises and they haven't come to pass yet. Continue to trust God. Your answer is, to the promise is coming. Continue to trust him. Don't doubt him. Don't allow the devil to steal away a blessing that God has for you. 
Don't allow the devil to make you uh, depressed, to make you down, to make you uh, defeated. Say to him, greater is he that is in you as a Christian than he that is, is in the world. And I want you right now to say to the devil, devil, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'll tell you what, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is by chance. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is a surprise. Everything is under his control. I'm thankful to be able to be with you this morning where you are on this beautiful Easter Sunday, April the 12th, 2020. Normally we'd be able to gather together in person, but I'm thankful for the opportunity for us to still gather together here online. I know that God has been so good to us. He has been so good to us. And there's many that would say, how could you say that? Look at the world around us. Because God, I'm not going to give you some tagline or some slogan or some cookie cutter speech that says, you know what? I've got it all figured out because I don't have it all figured out. I want to talk to you for just about five minutes, about as personal as I can. Hear me if you don't hear anything else this morning. You may think that everything that we've talked about today is a joke. You may think, I don't believe any of that. I think it's just what Christians make up in order to feel better about the life they walk through. And you know what? You have a right to believe whatever you want. But I want you to listen to me if it's only for the next few minutes. Do not wait until you leave this world to realize that you were wrong. There is a man called Jesus Christ that died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And he begs of you that you will give him your heart. He doesn't ask you to repay him. He doesn't ask you to jump through hoops. He doesn't ask you to do things that you could never do. He just asks you to accept the sacrifice that he's given. And to believe in your heart that he died for your sins. And that if you ask him, he'll save you. I beg of you this morning, if you're lost without Jesus, don't wake up in hell like the rich man did and realize that it's too late. Don't look for revival after you're already gone. The Bible says, where a tree falleth, so shall it lay. That means when you leave this life unprepared and lost, you're resurrected lost, you're judged lost, and you're cast into hell lost. Hear me. If you hear nothing else, Jesus Christ loves you and he will save you. I promise you that. He saved me. He has saved millions of others all around this world that first admitted they were a sinner in need of a savior. And they asked Jesus to forgive them and to save them. And that's what he did. So this Easter, I ask you, Will you make that choice? Right where you are, you can make that choice right now. It'll be the greatest choice you ever made. I can promise you that. Guys, this morning, thank you so much for being with us. I pray that this Easter service has touched your life. I pray that in your spirit, you're more excited this Easter than you were ever before. And I know that God has been so good to each and every one of us. I want to go through the comments again. Um, brother Glenn Bow, good morning, brother. Uh, prayers for Danielle Bow, for she is fighting her diabetes. And I know that has been uh, a constant battle that she has dealt with. So, folks, please, let's unite together and pray for her. Uh, right now, she is, uh, I'm not sure if she is still in the hospital. Uh, or if she has gone home. But either way, let's continue to pray for her. Um, let's continue to pray. Uh, uh, Sister Jane says, Fear not, for I am always with you. Yes, he is. Amen to that. That's comfort and joy in knowing that Jesus Christ is with us in whatever we may encounter and whatever we may go through. I just want to go through also and say again, let's pray for our doctors. Let's pray for our nurses. Let's pray for uh, the all hospital workers on the front lines that day we are dealing with this COVID-19 and putting themselves in harm's way to take care of those 
that are in need. And we appreciate that so much in all of the work that they do, uh, putting their, 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 their feelings and their families and, and leaving those and going to help the communities in which they live and support. And we are so thankful for that. Continue to pray for them, that God will protect him, our police officers, our EMS and fire departments, uh, everyone on the f front lines uh, that are, are helping people in need, not just during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but every day when they do what needs to be done to protect the communities. We are so thankful for all of that. Also, remember uh, all of the churches. As I said last night, it's not about church name. It's not about denomination. It's about Jesus Christ. We are the church bought by the blood of Jesus. No matter where we are, no matter what denomination we may be a part of, denomination is man-made. Denomination won't do a thing for you. Denomination will send you to hell quicker than you can imagine because if you're more focused on the type of church you go to instead of the reason you go to church, then you've got a problem. And so we need to come together as the church, regardless of where we are in this world, and pray and lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what, we'll see revival happen when we as Christians come together united in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, uh, remember all the pastors that are still preaching the word. And those who have ventured from the word, I pray that God will convict them and bring them back. But let's pray one for another. The Bible says to do that. Pray ye one for another. That's very uh, straight to the point. We need to pray for each other on a daily basis, not just once in a while. And so uh, continue to pray for the pastors, the churches, uh, the church members, um, those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the nursing homes, uh, those who have lost family members uh, to this COVID-19 and to many other things throughout this world that they've lost family members and they have that hurt in their heart. Pray for them that God will strengthen them and help them each and every day to be able to carry on. And so uh, continue to pray for all of them, all the prayer requests on here. I don't want to miss anyone. And again, I want to go through and thank each and every one of you uh, for being with us. Sister Rachel, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, Sister Teresa and Brother Bob, uh, thank you guys for coming and being with us. Uh, uh, Sean and Karen Jones, again, thank you guys. And I hope you guys are healthy and doing well. Uh, Sister Jane and Brother Gary, I'm glad you guys were able to be with us. Happy Easter to you guys. Uh, my Aunt Joy and Uncle Jim, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you guys. Love you guys. Uh, Sister Mary, um, Sister Kathy Bo, Sister Lorraine, uh, Brother Glenn, uh, Sister Bobby uh, Gall, good morning. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. Hope this service has been a blessing to you. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Um, I don't want to miss anyone as we scroll through here. I don't want to leave anybody out. And so I'm so thankful for each and every one of you joining us. Uh, Sister Tony. Hey, you and Brother Mike, good to see you guys. Tell the my uh, fellow guitar picker that I <laughs> I miss him. Miss being able to sit next to him and play guitar, but God bless you guys. I love you guys. Happy Easter. It says, Amen. Watching. Mike and I are coming, are, are, are coming in good. Still remember me in prayer. Love you guys. Absolutely. We'll be praying for you as we go to prayer here at the end of the service. Um, we continue to scroll through. I just I don't want to miss anybody. If you left a comment, thank you so much. Um, Sister Sandy, God bless you. Happy Easter. Thank you for being with us. Um, all right. Thank you so much, everybody, for being with us this morning. Thank you for leaving your prayer requests in the live feed. That way we can continue to pray one for another even after this broadcast ends. Uh, be sure to share this video and uh, all the videos that we do. Let's share these. Let's continue to invite people to come and be a part of our services. Uh, if you wanted that scripture reference again, it's Luke 24. Uh, verses 1 through 53, that's the entire chapter, so check that out. Please read through that entire chapter and let the Lord speak to you. Also, uh, we talked about the Weekend Word. It's our weekly podcast with me. Uh, every Saturday is a new episode. If you have checked it, I have not uploaded the new episode uh, as of today, uh, as of yesterday, because I wanted, it's going to deal with Easter, and so I didn't want them to overlap each other with the live service this morning. 
So the that podcast will be going out uh, and being uploaded uh, sometime this afternoon. So keep an eye out for that. That's at podpoint.com forward slash Adrian dash FFWB dash church. Those are free downloads. Check those out and download and stream those. Share them with your friends and family. And I know it'll be a blessing to them as well. Also, remember our prayer service every Saturday evening at 6 o'clock right here on Facebook Live. We have a wonderful time gathering gathering together and being able to pray one for another for our needs together as a church here on Facebook, and we're so thankful for that opportunity. Also, be sure to check out our church website at adrianffwb.org. It's got all the information about our church on there, so be sure to check that out. And I know it'll be a blessing to you. Share that as well with your friends and family. And right here on social media, I know you guys are here on fa- from Facebook, but if you haven't already, give our church page a like, follow us, get notified every time we go live. Also, check us out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Adrian FFWB. All one word for some past videos uh, and from services that we had, have had. Remember, everyone, share Uh, everything that we have online so we can spread the message of Jesus Christ to the world. Thank you so much again for being here. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now, thanking him for this opportunity to be able to gather together together here online and for his many, many blessings and for all of the prayer requests that were listed here today and for all the needs that were not listed, that were unspoken, that people have in each and every one of our lives. Let's pray for each other as we pray right now wherever you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful again, dear Jesus, for today and what this day means, that we serve a risen Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that we have that hope of eternal life. We're so thankful, dear God, for all that you've done for us. We're thankful for the opportunity to come together here on Facebook and lift up the name of Jesus Christ and be able to praise and worship you, dear God, because you are worthy. And this morning, dear God, we pray... uh, uh, for uh, uh, Danny, uh, Danielle Bo, dear God, right now dealing with her uh, fighting the diabetes, dear God, I know that right now that you can provide a touch, and dear God, we're asking you to touch her right now wherever she is and begin the healing process, dear God, to be able to get that under control because with you nothing is impossible, dear God. And those that uh, have unspoken requests, dear God, you know the need, and we're asking you to touch and heal according to your will. And dear God, those nurses and doctors and those in the medical field that every day go to work with fear of what they may what may happen to them today or what may happen to those that they care about or are treated. Reading. And dear God, I pray that you'll put your hand of protection over them and help them. Dear God, guide them every day as they try to heal and help others. And dear God, those that are in the hospitals right now, for whatever reason, whether it be this virus or another health concern, I pray, dear God, that you will touch and you will heal. And I pray, dear God, that you'll be with those in the nursing homes, that you'll give them strength, that you'll protect them, dear God, not just during this pandemic, but every day and be with those workers in the nursing homes and all of the comfort care that they bring, dear God, I pray that you'll lead and guide and strengthen them as well. Dear God, we're thankful for all that you've done. Pray for those who are sick right now, dear God, and those who have lost loved ones, that they've had to say goodbye. Dear God, I pray that you'll give them strength in their heart, that you'll give them peace, that you'll help them, dear God, to carry on in this life without those that they loved. I pray, dear God, that you'll let them know that they're never alone, and that you're with them every step of the way. Dear God, there are many right now across this world that have questions and not many answers. And dear God, I'm asking that you'll give them peace in their life, that you'll help them, dear God, to know that you're in control, and you always have been, and you always will be. Dear God, tonight, this, after, this morning, I'm sorry, this morning, as a special prayer request above all else, that if there be one that is listening to this live broadcast or will listen to this video later that is not saved, that they'll make that decision to make you Lord of their life before it's too late. Dear God, reach them where only you can, and that's through the power of your Holy Spirit in their life, dear God, to bring about that loving conviction that shows them their need for a Savior. Dear God, we pray for our families, and our friends that are lost. And should you come back today, they wouldn't be ready to meet you. And dear God, we beg of you that you will lead them to the cross. You'll convict them. You won't let them say no, 
any longer. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we're thankful for all the blessings that you've given and all the things that you've done without us knowing to keep us safe. Thank you so much, dear God. And we are thankful again for what Easter means and what you did for each and every one of us. Thank you so much, dear God. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. I pray that God's word has spoken to your life this morning. I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you are well. Know that I love you. My dad loves you. Our church loves you. But most importantly, Jesus Christ loves you. And no matter what, he always will. Trust him. Trust him, trust him, trust him. If that's one thing that I can emphasize more than anything today and every day is trust Jesus Christ 100% with your entire life because I promise you he will never let you down. That's a guarantee. I want to thank you so much for being here today. And remember, as we close, God bless you. God bless you your families, and most importantly, He has risen. We'll see you on Saturday at 6 o'clock. God bless you, and we'll talk to you then.